going to get started. Thanks everyone for introducing yourselves in the chat. Uh, today's session is going to be on synchronous and asynchronous instruction. Um, we're not going to get too deep into the weeds on it. We're just going to look at the basics. Before we begin though, I'd like to recognize that our head office in Scarborough is situated on traditional territories of First Nations peoples in Canada. We are situated on territories of the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of Scugog, Hiawatha First Nation, Alderville First Nation, and the Métis Nation. Uh, as a citizen of Coburg, Ontario, I'm on the area of land as well, uh, covered by the treaty, the Williams Treaty of 1923. We all seek a new relationship with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people, and one that's based in honor and deep respect. So uh, we're gonna go th really quickly through this topic today. Uh, and I know that earlier in the spring, everyone was told, you have to be prepared to teach synchronously and asynchronously. And, and for a lot of people, that was the first time they'd ever heard those terms. So we're quickly going to talk about that just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Uh, and then just here's what we have simple definitions. So synchronous is existing or occurring at the same time. It's all happening at once. Asynchronous means it's not all happening at once. Some people are working tomorrow, today, tonight, who knows? It's all at their own pace, which is actually a great way to learn. So, so there's some real benefits to having your lessons set up in both of these ways. Uh, for today, I'm going to use a little chart to keep things organized. There's the 5E model. We don't have time for all five of them. So for today, we're just going to look at some strategies to engage your students in a synchronous or asynchronous way to help them explore a topic, again, synchronously or asynchronously, uh, and then elaborate or explain on those, those ideas that they've been learning about uh, in an asynchronous or synchronous manner. Uh, we're all, you are all going to receive the slide deck after this, so please don't furiously take pictures of your screen or try to screen cap, don't do any of that. Please just sit back and enjoy the ride uh, and you'll get the deck afterwards so you can play around with it and do whatever you want. That's always a pain when you have to take notes furiously because you miss stuff. So uh, you'll also get access to a recording of this session. So if things go too quickly, and they might here and there, um, you can, you'll be able to go back and watch it again. We'll post it on the Edwin community right in the same place where you signed up for this session. So we'll make it really easy for you to go back and find. All right, so before we get too deep, uh, I'm gonna let somebody else talk a little bit about uh, the engagement angle of uh, of this model and that will give me a chance to answer any chat questions this is a little synchronous teaching trick so in this first stage the engage stage the goal is obviously to engage students and there are a couple of different ways that you can do this you can engage students in a brainstorming activity you can ask them what they think about something where they have the opportunity to share a perspective or an opinion you can ask them questions about what they're wondering about a topic or what they're curious about. This gives them a chance to think about a topic through a lens that is interesting for them. And you can use this as an opportunity to connect the topic to something that they've already learned about or access their prior knowledge about a topic. So you can ask them what they know about something and how they learned it, whether it was reading a book or watching a movie or engaging in a conversation with an adult. There we go. So there's a lot of reasons and, and, and ways that you can use that sort of engage piece of your lesson. Uh, so let's break it down and look at some of the ways that Edwin um, and some of the tools you use. Oops, stage, sorry. So here are some of the ways that you could get things going at the beginning of a lesson, brainstorming, asking questions, making connections, having them draw a picture really quickly. If you're using a tool like Google Draw or, or, um, or Jamboard or even Pear Deck, uh, you can have your students just draw something. What, talk about volcanoes. What does a volcano look like? What's going on underneath the volcano? I mean, you can do a lot of things with drawing. And when you're in a digital space and using some of those sort of uh, virtual whiteboard tools, um, it makes it fun for students instead of just typing everything. Uh, and it makes it a little more creative uh, and, and engaging. So there's lots of ways um, you can get students engaged. Let's look at some of the ways we might build an engaging flight lesson for students in a synchronous or asynchronous fashion. So I'm gonna jump out of my Google Slides here. I'm gonna jump into Edwin. Uh, and before I do, I'm just gonna plan ahead here. So let's say yeah, you've gotta teach a lesson on flight tomorrow. Um, hopefully you've all set your Edwin libraries up um, for the subjects and grades that you teach. 
Uh, if you're a little stuck on that, stick around at the end and we'll, we'll help you customize it. Uh, but for today, I'm just going to imagine that I have to teach a lesson on flight tomorrow, just the basics of flight to start off the unit. Uh, and I need some information that's going to help me with that. So uh, there's two ways to go in and find resources in Edwin. Uh, there's the science and technology button here, which will get me into science for grade six, uh, because I know that flight is one of the big strands there. So if I click on flight, I can begin scrolling through all these resources. I have some videos, I have some introductory materials, uh, an activity where they design their own winged vehicle or, or build a hot air balloon. Uh, lots of little activities here to get them thinking about flight and buoyancy and lift and how animals fly, how, how aircraft fly. All those kinds of things are covered here. So I wanted to get my students interested in this topic uh, and I was teaching either synchronously or asynchronously. Here is some something that I might do to get them started. So, and again, this isn't super in depth, we're not, you know, breaking any barriers you haven't broke before, but um, one activity you can do synchronously is work on a, a knowledge, uh, sort of what you, what they know, what they want to know, what they have learned, those good old fashioned KWL charts synchronously. Now that could be while you're on Google Meet, um, you could have a, a collaborative Google Doc open where everyone's filling it in. You could have them all filling in their own and sharing it with you as they complete it. Um, you could use a tool like Pear Deck for them to just answer what they know in real time. There's a lot of ways to uh, get that going synchronously. Or you could simply do it asynchronously. Uh, use Edwin or your learning management system to assign the content and then have them fill it in and send it back to you at their own pace. Uh, and actually, um, at the end, uh, I'll really quickly show you how Pear Deck can support that because, ah, there we go, I had a feeling that would come up. So there's a tool called Pear Deck, like the, the fruit pear and the word deck. And uh, if you want to stick around at the end, I can give you an even more in-depth explanation. But essentially, it takes uh, a presentation in Google Slides or PowerPoint Online and makes every slide interactive. So your students can type, they can draw, they can drag an image around the screen. And as the teacher, you see it in real time for every student. So it really, really supports synchronous instruction because you're getting that real time feedback, even if you're not in the same room or especially if you're in the same room, but you can't see everyone's screen at once. That's impossible. So Pear Deck really bridges that instructional gap uh, and you can flip those Pear Deck activities over to student paste so they can do it asynchronously. So they can flip through the slides when they're ready. They can answer the questions when they find the answer um, and, and then you can watch them come through in real time as the students work at their own pace. So that's one way you could get things kicked off. Uh, and if you're gonna be using Edwin for that, one thing you might do uh, is assign some of these learning objects, um, video on how animals fly, a video on how planes fly, uh, the activity where they build a balloon, if they have the materials and the, and the time and the space. You could even just give them an introductory piece on flight um, get them to read it and then complete the KWL. If you're if you're new to Edwin and you're wondering how to actually assign these pieces to students, then up in the top left corner here, you've got three really important buttons. One that assigns directly to Google Classroom. Right here, you just pick your class, make it an assignment, and from there, it's it's basically if you've used Google Classroom. Those buttons will all make perfect sense to you because you're actually in Google Classroom, not Edwin, when you're doing this stuff. The other way is to assign to Microsoft Teams. If you're using Microsoft Teams for your instruction, there's a button for that too. It just assigns directly to their team channel um, or where their assignments go, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, and lastly, if you don't use Google Classroom or you don't use Teams, you can also just grab the shareable link by clicking on shareable link and pasting that link anywhere. So I just put the link to this resource in the chat, which means if you're logged into Edwin, you can access it now. So that, that might clear up that question. I hope that helps. Um, question about Pear Deck and how you might assign. Uh, so there we go. We've got some content for our students. We've got them engaging, um, thinking about a topic. Let's move on to the next part and talk about sort of the next step in a lesson where you're gonna design it either synchronously or asynchronously. So while they're working in the middle of the lesson, they could be researching, watching videos, reading articles, discussing, 
crowdsourcing some ideas. These are just a few ways you can get them exploring. And this is where you'll really get heavy on the Edwin content. So if you want them to do some research on a particular type of flight or different types of bird and how they fly, um, you would be uh, assigning the materials either in Edwin to get them started, or you could put them into a, find a collection in Edwin that talks about flight or whatever topic you're exploring and have them work through that either at their own pace, asynchronously, because you've given them the link, or synchronously, so you're all working through it as a class um, on Google Meet, doing regular check-ins and working through things at the same time. So we've already got the, the, the beginning here. We've got a shared reading. We've got the asynchronous activity. Uh, this is where we'll get really heavy on the content. So in Edwin, we've already built a number of collections that will support instruction and already have activities built in. So you don't all have to start from scratch uh, on teaching online. Because one of the big challenges is moving to online is actually having the materials in a digital space. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up some of these materials here under, so there's a collection in Edwin um, on creating a physics superhero team based on principles of flight and other scientific topics student might, students might have learned about. So as students work through this deck, you can share it with the students on their own. They'll read about their task. They'll learn about how various creatures fly in the environment, uh, and they'll design suits. They'll, they'll come up with some ideas that will make, um, make flight happen for, for people. And they can also, this is where I think it gets really interesting, then once they know their task, head over to Edwin, and here's where I think a lot of light bulbs might go off when it comes to letting students go off and do some asynchronous research. I open up this resource in Edwin here. There we go. So we're in an activity on living things, flight design. So this links right back to those activities they were asked to do. How do aircraft, how do organisms fly? What's the difference between a stealth fighter and, and a flying fish? Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and once they've got themselves thinking and they're curious, there's a related button up here in the top. And this is really, really uh, a helpful thing if you're going to be learning about a particular topic. So let me go into flight design. I'll go right to the topic here. And if I click on the related topics here, I have a number of different resources that I can go off and explore on my own. And this is where students can start to direct their own learning. And you can trust that they're not just you know, noodling around on Google, finding random things that aren't really gonna support instruction. Um, if they click the related tab, they're getting resources here that are A, grade level for them, B, linked to this topic, and C, go beyond the topic um, and just that particular part of the book. So if students are, let's see, students are in a, in a textbook, let's say they got an old fashioned textbook in front of them, they're limited to whatever's in that textbook unless they have access to the internet. And even then, it's sort of a, the, the wild west um, with what they're gonna find. If you have them in Edwin and they're using the related tool here, you can trust that that research is taking them down pathways that are appropriate, that give them resources that connect to the curriculum, that uh, are the right reading level, that aren't going to confuse them. This is a great way to, to really take the reins off, which is one of the challenges with asynchronous teaching. Uh, are my students even doing what they're supposed to be doing? Are they in somewhere that, that's actually appropriate? The related tool is a really nice way to make sure that's happening. So, uh, so if you've used Edwin already and you haven't checked that out yet or used it before, definitely have a look at that because that's a really nice way to get, um, get students expanding their learning beyond what you've assigned. Okay, so that is a quick look at how you can do um, some assignments that might give them some resources that will let them watch a video as a class or go off and explore on their own. And again, I'm gonna send you this deck so you can go through and click around. Uh, I know it's fast. The final thing they could do um, as they explain something is they could use a tool like WeVideo. Um, there's a few others out there like Screencastify, but WeVideo comes for free with Edwin, where they can re record themselves explaining a topic. Um, they could model something using a tool like Pear Deck or Google Slides or, or Google Drawing, uh, and really um, use the tools they have at their disposal digitally 
to, to explain and, and show their learning. So some ways to do that uh, in here is, um, this is a slide deck that relates to what we've shown them before. So we're back on the superhero team activity. And here we go. So they would go right to this section here, and this is where they would explain the design of the activity that they had done, uh, and, and then send it over to you. So I see Amber has a really good question about how their work actually gets submitted. So I'm gonna show you a couple ways to do that now that we're at this stage. It's a perfect, perfect time to ask that question. Uh, a lot of it's gonna depend on which learning management system you're using, but, um, but uh, we'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So once they're in this next phase, they can sync, you can go over this thing as a class to make sure everyone's clear, ask the class for, for questions and suggestions on how to design this particular uh, flight device or how the animal flies. Uh, and then you can also have them work on that asynchronously. And this is where uh, I'm gonna start to answer your question, Amber. So when you assign these documents, you can do it in a few ways. Uh, if you use Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams or another tool, typically what you'll be doing is sending the link to that resource um, so that students can, can use and access the materials in real time. One really important trick, if you're sharing a Google slide document and you want the students to work on it on their own, is to create, oops, all right, here we go, is to find the edit tag at the end of the URL. Sorry, I know this is really digging into it and I'm happy to show this a few more times uh, towards the end here. And in fact, we're close to the end. Uh, if you change edit to copy, when students, I'm gonna put this right in the chat so you can see it in real time. Oh, and I see your Paradex question there too. Uh, if any of you were to click on this Google Doc link, it would create your own copy in your own Google Drive, if you use Google Drive, so that you can now go off and do your own thing with it, make your own copy. And then that, Amber, is what I would ask my students to do, as I would ask them to go onto the slide, create their own new slide, um, add answers right on the slide by adding a text box, whatever they want to do, uh, and share that deck back with me. Because then I know that they're used, it's sort of like a virtual worksheet or a virtual uh, activity sheet where you're giving them a material, piece of material, they can mark it up, they can write on it, they can add to it, uh, and then they can send it back to you. Uh, and if they do the same thing, if they just grab the link and share it back with you, then you have full access to everything that they've worked on. Um, that's probably the, the most straightforward way to do it. There are a number of other tools out there that allow students to sort of submit and for you to provide feedback and a lot of that stuff. But really, um, the, the nicest thing, the easiest thing to do is to send the direct link and have them send a direct link back. And they annotate or write down notes in Edwin. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know what, I'm gonna quickly wrap up the presentation and then I'll answer your question, just so people can uh, can get on with their day, but I promise to answer that, Amber. Uh, if we go to the next slide here, um, I'm gonna point out that we have a new educator community where teachers can go and find activities just like the one I went through. It's on this page here. It's the same place where you signed up for the workshop, but if you go under resources, you will find a number of collections on a number of different topics. So we have building literacy skills, uh, choice boards, ESL resources, Remembrance Day, lots of lots of stuff on here. So if you're looking for something that goes above and beyond what you're seeing in Edwin, that is a great place to go and find it. Uh, if you sign up for this workshop, you've probably been here already, but I'm gonna put a link uh, in the chat box just to be sure. Uh, and there are also a wide range of options for you if you're looking for additional support. Uh, you can find all of these options down in the bottom left-hand corner of your Edwin home screen. It's a little speech bubble with a question mark. And this is where you can access our help center for frequently asked questions. You can contact our support team if something isn't working quite right or a student can't access Edwin, or you can access the Edwin community directly from, from this button right here. Uh, and the last piece uh, I'll tell you about before I let you go is the, well, you can go anytime, but we also have the, the ability to, to contact our team and book a consultation with us at a time that works 
best for you. So if this session went really fast, and it did, um, you can click that link, pick a time that works better for you, and we'll meet with you, spend an hour or more, uh, and, and just make sure that you have everything you need to get started.